five mission carrying cargo up to the seven member crew that is on their extended stay on the orbiting complex. Thanks for joining us for this morning's coverage. This comes a couple of days after launching from uh, the Kennedy Space Center out in Florida. SpaceX CRS-25 Dragon has been making slow and incremental steps uh, to get closer to the International Space Station. Now we're seeing it from one of the external cameras as the station and the uh, Dragon cargo craft uh, orbit over the Earth. Right now in an orbital daytime, uh, hugging the east coast of Africa right now. The Dragon CRS-25 cargo craft just successfully performed its approach initiation burn. Right now we are in joint operations with the teams here in Mission Control Houston, uh, as well as the teams over, uh, the SpaceX teams over in Hawthorne, California. In Hawthorne, they're controlling the Dragon spacecraft, of course, uh, in joint operations with the teams here in Mission Control Houston, uh, looking after the orbiting complex, the International Space Station. Teams here are led by Flight Director Allison Bollinger that you see uh, in sort of the center of your screen. She's leading the teams through the rendezvous operations of CRS-25 with the orbiting complex. You'll be hearing the Capcom uh, Michael Ellsworth uh, talking with the crew aboard the International Space Station. We have a couple of NASA astronauts standing by, uh, ready for the monitoring operations uh, that will be overseeing Dragon's approach and eventual docking to the International Space Station later this morning. From the back end of the room, you can see CRS-25s take center stage uh, in the middle of the room with that tally-ho that we have uh, from one of our external, down, external uh, cameras, downlinking high-definition views here to Mission Control Houston. With a successful approach initiation burn, the uh, Dragon spacecraft is now in a coast phase, heading to one of several waypoints, sort of incremental stopping points that will uh, guide the cargo craft uh, gently in towards the docking uh, of the forward port to the forward port of the International Space Station. You can see that approach initiation burn taking place about two and a half kilometers below, uh, though if you take a direct path uh, to the International Space Station, the Dragon spacecraft is approximately four and a half, a little bit less at this point, four and a half kilometers away from the station. You can see two spheres that circle the uh, outline that you see, the silhouette of the International Space Station in this graphic. That first one is the uh, approach ellipsoid. That one's at about a thousand kilometer marker, and we're about uh, 20 or so minutes away from crossing that marker. Then you see those waypoints where we hug that second circle, that's the keep out sphere. Uh, we need permission and a go from the teams, uh, both here in Houston as well as in SpaceX, to proceed inside that keep out sphere uh, towards the first holding point that you see up there, waypoint two, that's at 20 meters. The 400 meter point and 20 meter point, as long as everything looks good, we'll just zoom right past those. Uh, there's no need to necessarily stop at those waypoints, really just markers to execute the series of burns to make those very precise maneuvers and line us up right on the docking axis in front of the International Space Station. Waypoint 2 will be a holding point uh, and another go no go will be assessed to make sure that everything continues to look good at that 20 meter holding point before pressing in for contact. Seven crew members are currently aboard the International Space Station, making up the complement of Expedition 67. From left to right, we have NASA astronaut Bob Hines. Hines will be taking the prime role of the monitoring operations of CRS-25 today. We have flight engineer Samantha Cristoforetti coming from the European Space Agency of Roscosmos. 
Uh, we have this the series of uh, cosmonauts that you see there in the center. Uh, Jessica Watkins will be uh, taking the backup role of monitoring the CRS-25 uh, cargo vehicle, uh, also from NASA. And then uh, Chell Lindgren, who commanded the Crew-4 uh, astronauts that you see flanking the cosmonauts there in the center, uh, rounding out the Expedition 67 crew. So again, taking the prime role of um, monitoring the uh, op the rendezvous of CRS-25, Jessica Watkins and Bob Hines, uh, they're at a system called the RPOP, Rendezvous Proximity Operations Panel. Uh, it's a software uh, that they'll use to monitor Dragon's approach. Uh, they'll be able to see telemetry uh, of the Dragon's approach. You can see sort of a preview of that telemetry here. Right now, they're away from the monitoring tool. They did spend some time earlier this morning uh, getting the tool set up, uh, but really they're not required for another 20, 25 minutes uh, until they need to officially begin their duties. Uh, the Expedition 67 crew, since it is a Saturday, spent most of the morning uh, cleaning up the space station, uh, part of their Saturday morning cleanup duties. Uh, Watkins and Hines didn't get away from that, even though they did have to, they do have the uh, very important role of monitoring Cirrus 25's approach uh, to the International Space Station. Uh, they didn't necessarily get a break uh, from needing to participate in cleaning the inside of the space station this morning. Uh, but with that uh, done, um, a lot of the crew is currently in an exercise period, though they will hold once they get uh, into uh, docking operations just to minimize the vibrations of the International Space Station. Uh, so there is uh, a chance for crew uh, to continue exercising for the next uh, uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, uh, maybe a little bit more. And of course, everything is looking good. Right now we're tracking uh, uh, an on-time docking, approximately 11.20 uh, a.m. Eastern Time, 10.20 a.m. Central Time. And that will bring uh, a lot of the cargo that's inside the uh, CRS-25 Dragon uh, to dock to the forward port. Uh, and allow access to the many, many uh, pounds, uh, several tons you can see of cargo that, that is inside. Lots of science investigations on this mission. You can see uh, making up almost 25 hundred pounds uh, of science investigations. There's some spacewalking equipment, computer resources. Uh, there's also some uh, unpressurized payload that we'll preview uh, a little bit later in our coverage, uh, including a science experiment. There's also some maintenance hardware for a bat there's a battery ch uh, charge and discharge unit in the trunk there. Uh, but overall, we're looking at uh, about uh, 5,800 pounds uh, of cargo. You're seeing some of the features of the SpaceX Dragon come uh, a little bit clearer into view as it gets closer to the International Space Station. Since we last reported uh, its distance of about 40, uh, uh, 4,500 uh, meters or four and a half kilometers away, uh, we're now closing in on three kilometers. From here, you can see the blinking uh, cargo uh, uh, docking light at the forward end. Uh, of the Dragon. Um, the view you're seeing now uh, is the view uh, that we'll have during its approach. That's sort of the top of the cone uh, from the graphic we just saw previously. And you can see the nose cone is deployed. Uh, towards the top of this view, you can see that that nose cone is open, exposing the docking ring and the soft capture mechanism that will be used uh, to make contact with the International Space Station and will eventually make that tight seal uh, and a hard dock with the orbiting complex. In the background, uh, you can see uh, 
clouds over the Arabian Sea. It's about to, uh, the, the Cargo Dragon and the International Space Station are about to cross over the southern border of Pakistan uh, and head into an orbital nighttime. So you will see the views uh, get a little bit darker. We may be able to see some of the navigation lights illuminate the uh, Cargo Dragon as we continue to uh, get pretty great visuals, some high definition views for using the external cameras aboard the International Space Station, but those views will start to get a little bit darker. So again, 2,500 pounds of cargo, uh, 2,500 pounds of specifically science aboard the International Space Station, and there is a lot of unique experiments coming up uh, to the orbiting complex. This one, called Dynamos, uh, is going to explore some of the complex communities of microorganisms that carry out key functions in soil. Uh, they have this, uh, these key functions, including cycling of carbon and other nutrients that support plant growth. Uh, so these soil samples will be coming up uh, to start investigating some of that. In the trunk of the dragon, you can see uh, a, a pretty great view from inside the dragon. That much larger artifact that you see over to the left is an experiment called Earth Surface Mineral Dust Source Investigation, or EMIT. Uh, this thing, this uh, um, experiment will be uh, using imaging spectroscopy technology to measure the mineral composition of dust on Earth arid regions. So this experiment will be pointing towards the Earth, and you can see uh, an example of some of the dust uh, there from uh, an image captured from space looking down at the planet. Another experiment is called immunosenescence. Aging is associated with changes in the immune response, known as immunosenescence. Microgravity causes changes in human immune cells that resemble this condition, but can happen, happen faster than the actual process of aging on Earth. So this investigation, immunosenescence, sponsored by the International Space Station National Laboratory, will use tissue chips, these small chips that you see demonstrated here in some of the images. Uh, they'll be using these tissue chips to study how microgravity affects immune function during flight and uh, whether immune cells uh, recover post-flight. Now these are just a few of the examples of the 2,500 pounds of cargo that's on board the CRS-25 today. And again, we're uh, on track for that to arrive uh, to the orbiting complex in just a little bit more than an hour. Uh, we're still targeting about 10.20 a.m. Central Time, 11.20 a.m. Eastern uh, to make contact with the International Space Station. Dragon is not the only vehicle to be uh, visiting the orbiting complex. Of course, with seven crew members aboard comes a series of uh, visiting crew spacecraft as well as cargo spacecraft. The uh, cargo dragon that you see here against the clouds uh, of the Arabia, of uh, actually Pakistan at this point, uh, will be making contact and docking with the forward end of the International Space Station.
Yeah, you can see the Crew 4 Dragon uh, taking the Nader or the Zenith or the, spa the space facing side of the uh, US side of the International Space Station. And then you see uh, the Soyuz MS 21 that carried the Cosmonaut uh, Trio, including Ole Oleg, Oleg Artemiev, Denis Matviev, and Sergei Korzakov. And of course, the uh, cargo spacecraft on the aft or back portion of the uh, International Space Station is Progress 81, and on the Zenith or space-facing side, Progress 80, both that brought uh, cargo and fuel uh, to the International Space Station. You see CRS-25 once docked uh, later this morning. We'll take the forward end of the International Space Station. It's scheduled to stay uh, for about a month. And Cargo Dragon, of course, has the ability to return to Earth, equipped with a heat shield to splash down off the coast of Florida, be recovered, and take valuable science uh, back to some of the researchers on Earth. CRS-25 CRS uh, crossing the Terminator line. So again, you'll start seeing the uh, illumination of the spacecraft and the Earth behind it start to get a little dimmer as we pass over the uh, western region of China. And uh, we'll, be cro we'll be heading on a northeastern track to cross into Mongolia pretty shortly. Uh, by the time we get to Mongolia, uh, expect to have uh, fairly uh, dark views of the spacecraft. Uh, but with those uh, darker views come the illumination of some of the navigation lights on board the spacecraft. You can see the docking light blinking at the center of the spacecraft, but you can see the uh, navigation light, the port red light coming up uh, a little bit more clearly. There's going to be a green light on the starboard side uh, that will start to be shown a little bit more clearly once we have a uh, orbital sunset. You can see the sun still illuminating the starboard side of the spacecraft. Back with you with uh, live views of the inside of the International Space Station control room. Again, these uh, teams led by Flight Director Allison Bollinger. Uh, on the phone there in the background is uh, Michael Ellsworth. He'll he'll be uh, that'll be his voice that you hear from here in Mission Control Houston up to the crew. It'll be Bob Hines and Jessica Watkins that uh, you'll be hearing respond from the International Space Station as they take the prime duties of monitoring uh, Dragon's approach to the International Space Station. The teams here, uh, this room operated being uh, being operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week to oversee uh, the orbiting complex as it orbits 16 times a day. Uh, the teams here overseeing the rendezvous operations of CRS-25. Again, we're in joint operations right now, so the teams here working with the same flight rules uh, with the Dragon flight controllers over in Hawthorne, California. Bollinger now polling the uh, teams here in Mission Control Houston for the next uh, burn. Uh, approach zero. So this is a burn that's executed once we reach that waypoint 
the waypoint zero is directly below uh, what's called the R bar. Uh, of the when looking at the International Space Station, it's a line that goes pretty much straight through it, uh, straight down to the Earth. So once we once we reach that point, directly underneath that approach zero burn, we'll execute the maneuver to effectively swing the spacecraft out in front of the International Space Station and line up with the docking axis. Now regaining some views. Uh, from the International Space Station. Again, you see those views starting to get a little bit darker, uh, that Terminator line coming in a lot clearer um, with the uh, spacecraft only 1,300 meters. Uh, that's a little over a kilometer away from the International Space Station at this time. Uh, you can see... Uh, uh, it's still pretty high up, so it's still getting catching some of that illumination from the sun, which is actively setting as we cross into an orbital nighttime. We also did get confirmation uh, that the Dragon spacecraft itself did uh, successfully execute an approach mid-course maneuver. Uh, this is uh, this is sort of a correction burn to once the. Um, Approach initiation burn is executed to get us uh, to that waypoint zero. The approach mid-course just helps us along the way, making sure that we rendezvous with that point as expected. Uh, with a good burn, we're expecting to hit that waypoint uh, in about 18 minutes.
Station Houston on two for docking status. On two. Three statuses for you. The first is Dragon Range is approximately 1,000 meters, so begin monitoring long range approach for steps one to four in 1.102. One Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Steps one through four in one decimal one zero two. Good copy. Second item is uh, we keep sharpening those pencils and we now have a docking time estimate of fifteen thirteen. Okay, copy fifteen thirteen. And the last item for either you or Farmer is uh, we've been poking around on SCC eight a little bit and we show now that our pop is working. Uh, if you want to confirm. Yes, and work. Thanks. And with that, uh, you hear the Capcom Michael Ellsworth reporting to the crew. Uh, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Now looking to uh, aim for a docking at approximately 10.13 uh, a.m. Central Time. That's 11.13 a.m. Eastern. So making great progress as we continue to analyze the trajectory of Dragon. You see that bright white dot uh, a little bit overexposed uh, with the camera uh, that we have on the outside of the International Space Station pointing towards it which is why it's taking on that illumination. The RPOP that was referenced is the Rendezvous Proximity Operations Panel. Uh, again, Bob Hines and Jessica Watkins are taking on that prime role of uh, monitoring the spacecraft. You can see a preview of that screen that they will be looking at. Um, they did set it up earlier today, and they had a chance to walk away from it until their official duties for monitoring the spacecraft's approach and docking begins, uh, which is coming up. So they're going to go ahead and check on that uh, uh, software, make sure everything is good, and officially begin their duties. In the meantime, uh, the... Dragon spacecraft is inside uh, the approach ellipsoid. Station on two, Dragon is in sight. We copy Dragon Tally Ho. All right, and at uh, 9.29 a.m. Central Time, we got confirmation from Jessica Watkins on board the International Space Station. The crew has a Tally Ho of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon. They visually see it.
In the meantime, the uh, International Space Station flight control teams did poll, uh, or were polled by Flight Director Allison Bollinger and uh, gave a go for uh, approach zero. So this is the burn that will be executed once uh, the spacecraft re reaches waypoint zero, which is 400 meters directly below the International Space Station. Uh, so they're on track to execute that maneuver in just a little over eight minutes. In the meantime, we're getting steady uh, views from the International Space Station. The view you see here uh, overexposing the Dragon. Uh, so that's that bright light that you see off to the right side. With that overexposure, you can see some of the plumes uh, from the Draco thrusters uh, that are helping to maneuver the spacecraft uh, to rendezvous with the Waypoint uh, Zero. The flight controllers are tracking some of those white flecks that you see passing into view. Uh, they're as of uh, now, they are of no concern, uh, though they are looking into uh, investigating what that is. The red flecks that you see are uh, radiation damage uh, of the camera itself, radiation uh, destroying some of the pixels uh, of the camera itself.
flight controller is continuing to track the uh, Dragon's approach to the International Space Station, reporting uh, everything looks good. The system's on board, the Dragon looks healthy, and the trajectory is looking nominal. Uh, we're a little less than three and a half minutes from executing that approach zero burn while we'll be directly underneath the International Space Station. And you can tell that we're closing in on that. Uh, the range rate is getting uh, much slower, so the Dragon's approach is slowing down. We're at about 0.2 meters per second at this time, and the range is uh, 416 uh, meters from the International Space Station. It's about a f the 400 meter mark is really what we're heading towards. Uh, that will be uh, waypoint zero when it is directly beneath. And uh, depending on the camera exposure that we see from this view, you may start seeing the Draco thruster plumes uh, start firing as that approach zero burn is initiated. It's a relatively quick burn because really it's just a maneuver burn just to swing us out in front of the International Space Station, but that's coming up here uh, in about two and a half minutes. Everything continues to look good. CRS-25 uh, continuing its approach to the International Space Station. We're about 30 seconds from the initiation of that approach zero burn to swing us from underneath the space station to right out in front. Approach zero underway. You can see those thruster firings on the left side of the spacecraft from this view. It's actually the the nadir or the the lower part of the spacecraft in its uh, docking orientation. If you're looking at it from uh, the perspective of the nose cone, which is towards the top. Flight controller's taking a look at that approach, uh, zero burn, things looking good so far. 
In the meantime, the uh, International Space Station solar arrays have been configured uh, for the upcoming docking. Again, we're looking to arrive a little earlier than we were anticipating. Uh, we were targeting 10.20 a.m. Central. Uh, now the new target is 10.13 a.m. Central. Station on two for Block Bravo. Houston's listening, go ahead. We see us uh, transition to step two and one decimal one zero two. We see the vehicle mode as transition to docking access and range 340. We can curse you in step two. As expected, uh, that was the voice of Jessica Watkins on board the International Space Station. She's taking a role in watching the uh, Dragon's approach and making sure everything looks good, uh, reporting the telemetry and the vehicle's state and status uh, from her perspective and her tool uh, called the Rendezvous Proximity Operations Panel, or RPOP. Uh, she's taking on the backup role, so it'll be her voice that you hear more so from the International Space Station, uh, talking with the flight control teams here, Mission Control Houston, Michael Ems Elmsworth. Ellsworth is the uh, Capcom, the voice here in the room, at the controls uh, and taking the prime role of monitoring the Dragon's approach from aboard the International Space Station, that prime role of the, the monitoring, and if necessary, can execute the abort uh, should anything uh, look off nominal uh, from his perspective perspective is NASA astronaut Bob Hines. But as you uh, heard, reported from Jessica Watkins, uh, the vehicle is performing as expected. Uh, things are looking very good uh, for Dragon's approach. Um, passing that waypoint zero and that approach zero milestone uh, and heading to waypoint one. The difference in the waypoint is uh, waypoint zero is directly below and waypoint one is directly in front. Uh, once it passes waypoint one, uh, it'll start making its approach to go inside the keep-out sphere. The teams here in Mission Control Houston will pull ahead of time to make sure the vehicle is in a good configuration and good status before giving that go to enter that keep-out sphere. There's no pausing. Uh, that's planned at the 220-meter mark. They could pause if they wanted to, but the nominal rendezvous trajectory and plan uh, has us pass that uh, waypoint one executing a waypoint one or a approach one burn uh, to push in right along the docking axis, really straight in uh, towards the docking. Uh, now we're starting to see those, those views from the uh, International Space Station, those high definition views looking down at the Dragon spacecraft, which is currently 330 meters hugging that uh, the outside of that keep out sphere, uh, making its approach from below the International Space Station to right above. We're about to cross into an orbital daytime. Uh, so you'll start seeing the views of the Dragon spacecraft itself as well as the views behind it uh, start getting a little bit brighter. Right now the space station is uh, right over the center of the um, uh, Pacific Ocean. It's about uh, 260 statute miles. It's hugging the Terminator line, which right now is uh, really cutting right down the middle uh, of the Pacific Ocean. So we'll start seeing uh, some views of the Pacific Ocean, perhaps some cloud coverage uh, here very shortly. So you can see the camera start to really change as we get uh, more illumination on the spacecraft itself. Uh, 
The cameras themselves are controlled from a console here in Mission Control Houston. That position is called Cronus. They have full autonomy over the control of the cameras on the outside of the International Space Station, able to adjust the zoom, the focus, the exposure. Uh, so they're, they're working right now uh, to do exactly what you're seeing here, to zoom in, focus the uh, um, focus on the spacecraft a little bit more, and change the exposure so we can see the spacecraft and those plumes coming from the Draco's thrusters uh, a little bit clearer.
the uh, Dragon cargo craft, about two, 312 meters from the International Space Station. It really doesn't change in distance as it makes this maneuver from below the International Space Station to right in front. It really hugs the outside of what's called the keep-out sphere, which is roughly 180 to 200 meters uh, away from the International Space Station. So it maintains that distance as it comes, as it goes in front. But as it makes this maneuver, the timing here could not be more perfect. Um, we're about a little more than halfway from uh, from below the space stations to right in front. So if you were looking at a clock, we'd be somewhere around seven or eight o'clock. Um, and we're getting, that just happens to line up perfectly uh, with an orbital sunrise over the Southern Pacific Ocean. Everything looking good. Uh, the teams now are uh, on a go no go pole for proceeding past waypoint one and executing the approach one burn. So this means when it's right in front of the International Space Station, really right along the docking access, uh, if we get that go, they'll go ahead and proceed with initiating those thrusters. There's no need to pause at that waypoint. Uh, the waypoint is roughly 220 meters directly in front of the International Space Station. That go is really also a go to proceed past waypoint one and cross into the keepout sphere. Again, that pole is underway. Dragon's approach continues to look good. We're a little over 300 meters from the International Space Station, just taking in some fantastic high-definition views uh, as it makes its way to waypoint one. Um, regaining some, uh, regaining those views, what we'll be handing over for some of the satellites throughout today's coverage, um, those tracking and data relay satellites that are in geosynchronous orbit, a little more than 23,000 miles away from Earth. But we're getting those views now and enjoying them as we uh, cross the Terminator line into an orbital sunrise over the southern Pacific Ocean. We did get confirmation uh, from Allison Bollinger, the flight director here in Mission Control Houston. Um, Mission Control Houston is go to proceed past waypoint one, which means once we uh, rendezvous with waypoint one here, uh, in approximately nine minutes. We'll go ahead and execute the approach one burn uh, and push in from about approximately the 220 meter mark straight in uh, into the keep, keep out sphere towards waypoint two. Waypoint two is a holding point about 20 meters away. So that'll be the, uh, that'll be the first and, and likely only hold uh, until we go get the go to proceed in uh, towards a contact and capture on the forward end of the International Space Station. Uh, we are making some great progress, so we're still targeting 10.13 a.m. Central Time to make contact. For Block Bravo, range is 299. Vehicle is approaching the corridor. 
Orientation is as expected. Houston copies, concurs with all. That was the voice of Jessica Watkins from on board the International Space Station. Again, she's working with Bob Hines, the two of them monitoring Dragon's approach, reporting great trajectory for the uh, Dragon spacecraft. It is well on its way uh, towards what's called the approach corridor. It's a cone-shaped uh, um, uh, range, really, that's in front of the uh, International Space Station. Uh, to, and and it uh, sets the stage for Dragon making its approach. It's still on its way to waypoint one. We got about seven and a half minutes until it makes it to there. We'll execute that approach one burn to push slowly in. The range rate is uh, very slow at this point. You can see uh, it's making very methodical approach to that point. We're at about 0 0.09 meters per second, but everything is looking good.
So again, Dragon continuing its approach. Uh, you can see some of the plumes from the Draco thrusters as it makes its way towards waypoint one. We're about a minute away from waypoint one. Now, based on the latest calculations of the trajectory, we are going relatively slow, so we have a new time uh, that we're aiming for for docking. That's 10.18 a.m. Central Time. Thirty seconds to waypoint one. What you're seeing is approach one burn underway. Station Houston on two for running through status. Yeah, two. Dragon is transmitting docking camera video, so please confirm video and data are updating in the Dragon docking monitor. And if you bring that up on SSC 17, we can follow along on the ground as well. Copy and work on SSC 17. Everybody, and while you're working on that, just want to let you know that Houston and Station are go for Dragon to approach to 20 meters. We go to 20 meters. And why do we like that video? And Houston Station has good DDM video. Houston copies and concurs. And with that, you heard Jessica Watkins reporting. Uh, they've got good video. This is what she's looking at. This is her screen, her, uh, her and Bob Hines, NASA astronauts taking the monitoring role, uh, watching Cirrus 25 push in for a docking after successfully executing the approach one burn, confirming from here in Mission Control Houston that burn looked good. So we're pushing in and we're proceeding into the keep out sphere towards waypoint two, the 20 meter hold. Getting great video from the Dragon uh, through that common communications for visiting vehicle or C2V2, uh, a connection between uh, the uh, Dragon vehicle and the International Space Station that's providing that, uh, that linked video directly uh, from Dragon to the International Space Station. So we're pushing in. Uh, we're a little under 180 meters at this point. Inside the keep out sphere. Making a slow and methodical approach to the waypoint two uh, holding point, about 0.3 meters per second. We're anticipating waypoint to arrival in a little less than eight and a half minutes. And again, the new estimate for a contact time where CRS-25 will make physical contact with the forward end of the International Space Station. The new target that we have is 1018 a.m. Central Time.
now only uh, 140 meters from the International Space Station, zooming in from the external cameras provides fantastic high-definition views. Uh, we'll be seeing illuminated views of the Dragon spacecraft from here on out until we make physical contact with the International Space Station. We'll be in orbital daytime uh, until that docking time. Everything is again looking good for that approach right now. Flight Director Allison Bollinger going around the room here in Mission Control Houston, getting a, a pull from each of the flight control positions uh, to ensure uh, that we are go to proceed past the waypoint to holding point. Again, we'll make an assessment once we get to uh, waypoint two, but uh, there, they, there's a chance we may push uh, right after holding at waypoint two. We may pu push very shortly afterwards. Um, Towards, uh, towards a docking to meet that eight, uh, anticipated 1018 contact time. But again, Flight Director Bollinger uh, going around the room now to, to get a sense. Four block Bravo, range is 123. The vehicle is in the corridor, orientation as, is as expected. Vehicle mode is approached to a line point. We concur, so we see that takes you to step three. And again, and again, NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins uh, reporting the status of the CRS-25's approach at uh, predetermined markers throughout uh, the approach sequence. Again, everything continues to look good. We're pressing in towards waypoint two, 20 meters away. Uh, right now, we're sitting at about 110 meters. We did receive confirmation here at Mission Control Houston ahead of the Waypoint 2 arrival. The Dragon spacecraft itself is configured for docking, still maintaining great connection and great views from the Dragon spacecraft itself, looking at the International Space Station. Uh, when we cycle through those views, you can see the uh, Crew 4 vehicle docked to the Zenith port or the space-facing port. You see there, there'll be two Dragons docked uh, to the International Space Station for about a month. Station on two, we have reviewed steps five and six, and we are ready for docking. Houston copies that you are ready for docking. We'll let you know when we are there as well. and it's seeming like we're not going to be holding at waypoint two for long. We did receive confirmation from Jessica Watkins, the crew on board the International Space Station. Uh, that's uh, Bob Hines and Jessica Watkins. You can actually see the outline of the cupola from this dragon view. If you look off to the right uh, where the Japanese module is, the, the gem, right underneath it, you can see the windows, the seven bay window of the cupola uh, poking out there, so you can so you know that Jessica Watkins and uh, Bob Hines have visual contact right now with the uh, CRS-25 vehicle that's 66 meters away. So there we go, and we did receive um, confirmation from uh, the mission director out in Hawthorne, California, that uh, the teams there at SpaceX are also go. Again, Allison Bollinger here in uh, Mission Control Houston polling her team uh, to make sure that the Mission Control uh, team here in Houston is go. That poll being conducted ahead of the Waypoint 2 arrival, which is expected two minutes from now. As long as everything looks good, uh, we'll be proceed we won't be holding at Waypoint 2 for long, and we'll press in for docking.
With that, we got confirmation from Allison Bollinger. Uh, Houston flight is go uh, for docking. So we'll hold at the waypoint two. Once we get confirmation of a good hold, don't expect uh, to be holding there for very long before uh, we push in for docking. That uh, waypoint two arrival is expected in about 15 seconds. We're sitting at about uh, 23 meters. Again, that hold is at 20, and we're slowing down our range. Uh, rate to about 0.15 meters per second and going down. Station Houston on two, the Dragon hold we performed at uh, waypoint two was very brief, so Dragon is now resuming approach and go for docking. You can go ahead and monitor for steps five and six in one decimal one zero two, Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. We go for docking after a short hold and uh, we'll go on steps five and six. Good copy. And as anticipated, the hold at the 20 meter waypoint two point was very brief. The uh, Dragon CRS 25 vehicle pressing in for docking. Approach to docking port. Prior range is decreasing. And range is 14 meters. Houston copies concurs. Good report. Good report from the crew. That approach from the waypoint to holding point is looking good. We're pressing in towards a contact and capture. Now we are temporarily losing that video from the International Space Station. We should regain it shortly, but we do still have good data flowing in from the Dragon vehicle. Uh, we're about 10 meters away. You're getting a live view of the International Space Station flight control room. Flight Director Allison Bowling are leading the teams here monitoring Dragon's approach. Jessica Watkins and Bob Hines aboard the International Space Station also monitoring and then of course working hand in hand with the SpaceX flight control team out in Hawthorne, California. Nine meters in closing. Houston on two, primary range is decreasing, range is five meters, vehicle is centered, largest excursion observed is one degree. Houston copies, good report.
All right, four meters in closing. Everything continues to look good. Now, we don't have views from the International Space Station, but with the data that we're receiving and the reports from the, cr from the crew, we are proceeding towards a contact uh, here shortly. Three meters in closing. Copy, Chuck. Crew hands off point. One meter. One meter in closing. And we're getting views right at the last second. Dragon contact and soft capture complete. 10.21 a.m. complete. 10.21 a.m. Central Time, 11.21 a.m. Eastern, 267 statute miles. Audible laughter from here in uh, Mission Control as uh, we do lose views right at the right after a confirmed capture. We did get those views, though, to see it actually go in, which was fantastic. But we did have a confirmed uh, soft capture at 10.21 a.m. Central Time. The International Space Station and Dragon spacecraft were over the South Atlantic Ocean, 267 statute miles. Station Houston, ring retraction in progress. So that soft capture ring, again, we have a confirmed soft capture. That ring is retracting. It's pulling the Dragon in closer uh, to the International Docking Adapter. That white structure you see, that's at the very tip of the International Space Station. Uh, that black structure being the pressurized mating adapter. We're looking at the very forward end of the International Space Station from one of the cameras uh, that are off on the uh, Japanese exposed facility. We did have that soft capture at 10.21 a.m. Central Time. We're pulling in using that soft capture ring. Uh, we'll continue to provide coverage until we get past a hard mate uh, with the International Space Station. After that soft capture ring is fully retracted, pulling that uh, dragon in for a nice tight seal, uh, there's 12 hooks that will actually uh, hard mate and hard dock. Uh, the vehicle to the International Space Station. Uh, they are uh, latched in gangs of uh, uh, two gangs of six, so six at a time, uh, and then we'll have a hard dock with the International Space Station. But we did have that soft capture 1021 uh, pulling in with the soft capture ring, uh, and we're standing by for a good uh, soft capture ring retraction and a good hard dock. We'll continue to provide coverage until then. And on two, we see undocking complete sensors one and two off OFF and have started the stopwatch. 
We concur in our status is that ring retraction is now complete, so docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. We're working that from the ground. And you heard that uh, soft capture ring has fully retracted, meaning the soft capture, capture ring did a, its job of pulling the spacecraft in um, to, for a nice seal with the international docking adapter on the forward end of the International Space Station. There is uh, very fine-tuned, very calculated um, attitude control maneuvers that the uh, uh, attitude control officer Yeah, there we go. The International Space Station attitude control uh, has to be configured prior to those hooks driving to be on control moment gyros only. Uh, ADCO, the ADCO officer that you see at the bottom of your screen, uh, has just confirmed that the space station itself is using gyros only to hold the attitude in place, meaning we're in a good configuration from the space station side to proceed with um, driving those hooks for a hard mate. And uh, Flight Director Allison Bollinger just gave that go to the mission director. Houston, MCS is configured. We're proceeding with hook driving. Copy, this is CCMG only. Capcom Michael M. Ellsworth. Your stopwatch is no longer required. Copy all. Capcom Michael Ellsworth uh, reporting to the crew uh, that that sequence is underway. Jessica Watkins uh, confirming from the International Space Station. Again, she's working with Bob Hines, but both of them monitoring uh, Dragon's approach and watching the sequence unfold. Uh, we are proceeding towards driving those hooks. And we got confirmation. Again, those there's 12 hooks that uh, create a hard mate between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. Six of them have driven and have closed. Uh, we have a good latch on those first six. The other six are driving.
And we got confirmation the last six hooks uh, have driven and are closed. The soft capture ring is stowing. And we're waiting for confirmation of a success successful hard mate uh, to the International Space Station. Station Houston on two, hard capture complete. Station copies, hard capture complete. Congratulations to the SpaceX and NASA team on a successful rendezvous and docking of SpaceX CRS-25. When faced with unforeseen challenges, this team remained vigilant and focused, ensuring today's delivery of groundbreaking science and crucial supplies to the International Space Station. We look forward to executing the remainder of the mission with you all. Welcome aboard. Station Houston, we appreciate those words. Get some cheers around here as well. Fantastic. Thanks for all the hard work. And some words from NASA uh, astronaut Jessica Watkins on board the International Space Station. She was next to NASA astronaut Bob Hines, uh, watching Dragon's approach and monitoring, making sure that the 5,800 pounds of precious cargo inside that spacecraft made its way successfully to the International Space Station, and it did. We had a soft capture confirmed at 10.21 a.m. Central Time this morning. And we uh, did get past a good heart mate uh, with the International Space Station. Uh, with that, uh, with an uh, on-time docking to the International Space Station, the, uh, the crew's day is not quite done. Uh, with successful approach monitoring uh, and a successful hard capture, uh, teams will work together to open up the hatches, uh, making their way until eventually the Dragon hatch is opened and they uh, have access to the precious cargo inside uh, the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, that uh, hatch open is expected to occur uh, in approximately an hour and a half, shortly after noon central time, 1 p.m. eastern time. Uh, the crew will have access to the cargo inside, and uh, they're scheduled to, later this afternoon, uh, begin transfer operations, taking some of the critical cargo from inside the pressurized, uh, pr pressurized part of the Dragon spacecraft and bring it inside uh, the International Space Station. Uh, their space station flight controllers uh, switching attitude control back to normal with a successful hard mate. And uh, they'll proceed for the rest of the day getting some of that cargo from inside the International Space Station. It's been quite a journey after launching 8.44 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.44 p.m. Central on July 14th, making a journey over a little more than a day and a half to rendezvous and make contact with the International Space Station at 10.21 a.m. Central Time this morning, July 16th. Uh, that uh, time was 10.21 at the time. The space station and the Dragon spacecraft are 267 statute miles over the southern Atlantic Ocean. We heard congratulatory words from NASA astronauts Jessica Watkins and uh, from the uh, teams in Mission Control Houston. With that, that'll wrap up our coverage of today's uh, rendezvous and docking operation. CRS-25 uh, officially attached to the International Space Station and will be for the next month. With that, this is Mission Control Houston.